Oh, okay. We got an answer to a prayer request tonight. I just got information from uh, Daniel Roth. We've been praying that he'd get a job at Forest Hill Police Department. He did. So yeah. as of tonight. So that's wonderful. Now, where's that app again? <laughs> oh, here it is. Let me get this started. All right. Well, uh, uh, thank you all for coming tonight. I know we're a little thin, but that's normal. Um, I'd like to talk about the diet that is required for uh, the believer and Jesus Christ, their spiritual health and their eternal well-being. Um, I've been going through planning, trying to plan my retirement, whatever that is. Uh, is that really a thing? No. And Patsy's shaking her head. No. I agree with her. Um, uh, retirement is not a thing. You're just changing what you're doing and how you get uh, sustain yourself. Uh, <laughs> But um, I wanted to talk about the eternal well-being as well, and that requires some planning as well. We, we don't think much about uh, our heavenly destination because we're too earthly-minded most of the time. Uh, I'd like us to probably think a little bit better in the heavenly-minded realm and, uh, and, and think differently in our approach and our Christian walk here on earth. Uh, the old adage uh, is, you are what you eat. You ever heard of that? And it's the same with our spiritual intake. You are what you eat, <laughs> unfortunately. And this applies to our spiritual health, which, by the way, also affects your future retirement planning in heaven. Uh, oh, did I say retirement planning? Sorry. Uh, eternal planning in heaven. So uh, I, I've got this uh, on my brain because I'm trying to figure out all of this uh, stuff. And I decided to go back to uh, continue to work. So uh, I figured if I'm going to go work, let's make some money at it. So I, I took a, a, large, a larger paying job. We'll see how that goes. I'm only going to work a few more years. We'll see how that goes. But um, I'm trying to think down the road. What am I going to do with my rest of my life? And we as believers ought to be looking ahead to heaven in what is going to be laid up there. And uh, I'd like to t discuss that a little briefly tonight. Uh, well, we'll see how our spiritual health today affects our eternal hope in heaven. And uh, we'll see how we can get there. How can you better plan uh, that? And it requires a diet. Uh, oh, we need a diet? Yes. But this isn't going to be a, a hard diet. It's not like you're going to uh, kill yourself over uh, calories or anything like that. So I've got a few points. The first point uh, covers the why. And the why for tonight is the scriptures are inspired by God and are profitable. The scriptures are inspired by God and are profitable. If you could turn with me in your Bible. Oh, let's pray first before we get started. I think we did pray, but uh, we'll pray for the message now. Thank you, Father, for the time that we, we have to spend together in your word. We pray that it be profitable to us. We pray, Father, Lord, you'd help us to be heavenly minded by the end of this and we would start making better choices in our time here on earth. We thank you, Father, for Pastor and uh, Andrea and the boys. We pray that they would have a good time and uh, bring them back to us all home safely and continue our ministry here. We thank you now for the time in your word in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm not qualified, uh, as you know, uh, to do this, but I'm um, so, uh, but I am qualified to preach to myself, so that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. Because I think we all can use some improvement in our time management, in our spiritual diet. So, 2 Timothy chapter 3, if you could turn with me there, I'll do the same and hopefully find it faster than you. Oh, goody, I'm there. Oh, uh, well, no, no, now I'm there. Uh, chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, uh, at the end of the chapter. 2 Timothy chapter 3. You probably know this verse by heart already. It's all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And, and I'd like to point out those words. It's profitable for doctrine. It's for profitable for, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Uh, and, and these are things that uh, I think are, are true about the scriptures. They uh, provide us certain nutrients in our diet that we need daily. And uh, of course, uh, I'll use Matthew 4, 4 a little later, but uh, 
uh, because we don't live by bread alone, <laughs> but by every word, uh, word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. First, profitable for doctrine. Uh, the, our spirits have been created uh, in such a way uh, that they were dead. Oh, does that shock anybody? Well, actually, it's true. Uh, in the Garden of Eden, when uh, mankind sinned, our spirit became dead. And we needed God to step in and quicken our spirit and make it alive again. And then we did. That happened the moment we trusted in Jesus Christ. Now, we got our spirits rejuvenated, uh, re, re, uh, made alive, quickened, uh, it says in the scriptures. And now that our spirit is alive, it needs nourishment. Nourishment for many reasons, and we'll get into a few of those tonight. Uh, our spirit needs knowledge in God's word, first of all. Why does our spirit need God? I would think uh, uh, knowledge. I would think that our uh, brains need that. Well, yeah, your brains kind of use it. But uh, I think uh, it, it, it penetrates to our spirit, uh, and uh, we understand that. Our, uh, so, so it's proof for doctrine, profitable for doctrine. What about reproof? Well, our spirit needs to be able to combat against the enemy's ways. We're all familiar with uh, with uh, verses that talk about that, how that uh, uh, we need to uh, put on the full armor of God and be able to withstand those fiery darts. Uh, and we need to be have information that the scripture gives us that will help protect us from the ways of the evil one. And then, uh, if that's for reproof, for, doc, for correction. Oh, our spirit needs to be corrected once in a while. I'll agree with that. Okay. But the question is, uh, are you willing to be corrected? Are you correctable? And uh, we can get a high and mighty spirit that says, I don't need correction. And that would hinder our walk with God. It will hinder our intake of spiritual food. It will hinder us taking the time to read God's word. So make sure that we're not only corrected, but we're correctable. Look for ways that we can improve or, or correct uh, ourselves in the scriptures. Uh, it's a one-on-one, -on -one, it's a personal relationship with you in Christ. So uh, make it personal and, and do that. And then finally, uh, uh, in this regard, the spirit needs to be trained in the ways of God's righteousness and good works. And that's why it says for instruction in righteousness. Uh, uh, and that the man of God may be perfectly, uh, or th uh, perfect, thoroughly, that's kind of interesting, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Why does God want to see us perfected? Well, because uh, we were created in his image, for one, but we are to be used as ambassadors for Christ, for his work. Uh, he's not going to do it himself. Uh, he's done all the work. Why? Uh, we need to be more involved personally. And not only in uh, righteousness and right living and doing right and thinking right, but also in good works. And we talked about uh, Garrity Bank doing uh, this uh, collection for the hurricane uh, victims of, uh, of uh, this uh, hurricane that's coming to Florida uh, and, and, and others that have already passed through. I I'm just thinking those are sort of good works. Also, other good works would be sharing the gospel with someone or uh, doing right or helping someone in need or just praying with someone or even just as a minimum, just being with someone who's going through a hard time. Just presence, not talking, just silent presence. We need that uh, more in our, uh, boy, we need it more today than ever before. And it's something I think people are just starving for. So we need to add the diet of scripture uh, and uh, that's inspired by God, and it is, it is profitable. We need that. That's probably a good why. What about the what? Second point, scriptures illuminate our path. You don't have to turn there, but you probably know Psalm 119 of 105, and it says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalm 119, 105. You know, it's true that our spirit needs that clarity, Clarity at the detail level. Why? Because as I'm walking along here in the dark, I can't see. Now I'm about ready to step off the edge here. I need the light at my feet 
so I can see the obstacles I'm going to hit. Or how about going the other way? I need to see this so I don't stumble. You know, uh, the Lord gives us uh, uh, the, the details of life to help shine up the things that are in our immediate world. Good doctrine and good uh, lessons of life that we need to glean from Scripture to help us to live right and to go to Him with our problems and good habits. These are the things, the details of our life's walk that need to illuminate at our feet level. And then secondly, our spirit needs guidance in our daily walk at a kind of a major level, a direction level. And that's when it says, and a light unto my path. With the pathway, you're going to see that winding off until you can't see it anymore. We need that kind of direction in life. Do I turn left here? Do I turn right? I want to commit all my ways uh, to the Lord. I want to order my steps in Him. That way I don't make those mistakes in life and do the things I shouldn't do. So uh, we, we look for the Word of God to illuminate our path. So we said, first of all, Scriptures are inspired by God and are profitable. Secondly, the what? The scriptures themselves, they illuminate our path. Thirdly, I've got actually a total of three hows. <laughs> how, how, how? <laughs> the first of three hows is the scriptures provide spiritual nourishment. And that's Matthew 4 4. If you want to turn with me there, because I would like to look at more than just the one verse. Matthew chapter 4. Uh, Jesus had just finished getting uh, ordained, if you will, into the ministry by his heavenly father when he was baptized, rose out from the water, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. That's the end of chapter 3. And now we get into chapter 4 of Matthew, Matthew chapter 4, and where we read the uh, this verse says, uh, then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness. Notice that the Spirit was leading him. We just got finished talking about light to my feet, and, uh, oh, I'm sorry, it wasn't light to our feet. No, no, uh, it was a lamp to my feet, so I can see up close, and a, and a light to my whole pathway. Here the Spirit is now leading uh, Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, verse 2, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hungered. <laughs> That's probably a big understatement <laughs> uh, of living on very little or nothing at all, uh, water or, or bare necessity. He walked into that wilderness with nothing, and he had to self-sustain barely, uh, and he was very hungry afterwards, which makes sense. And so verse 3 uh, and when the tempter, oh, we know who that is. That's the same tempter we're fighting against every day. One of our three enemies of the believer. The world, the flesh, but this one's the tempter or the devil. And, uh, and the tempter came to him and said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Ah, but Jesus, uh, but he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. What an answer. And this is little passage that Jesus quoted here was from Deuteronomy chapter 8. And, and Jesus was quoting this because it's so applicable to us today. When you're tempted uh, with something, we know that God gives escapes. And one of the biggest ways that we can defend against temptation is to just quote scripture. And you can't quote scripture if you don't know scripture. And you can't know scripture until you read your Bible regularly and get that dietary intake. I think you're starting to get the how here, right? And so we need that daily intake. Christ was tempted uh, to turn the stones into bread. You know, and that's another thing. Uh, you know, being uh, able to rebuke, uh, rebuke the devil uh, and, you know, and it says, you know, rebuke him, he'll leave. Uh, I am so, uh, but he thwarted that temptation with scripture. 
And then later on you see that uh, when man shall not live by bread alone, that's a pure carbs thing, isn't it? <laughs> I'm trying to limit my carbs, <laughs> but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That's the meat of the word of God. Boy, that's protein. That's stuff your body can really use well. Now, carbohydrates and uh, vegetables and proteins, uh, meats, are all part of our diet. And we need to balance those in some fashion. But it's the meat that gives us a good protein. And uh, we can replace meat with vegetables and go on a, a all vegetable diet, which is fine. And we can have that. Uh, but, but, you know, I'm just so, so thankful that we don't eat a bunch of carbs. Because if all I did was eat bread all day, I'd get really overweight really quick. Uh, I'm just saying, uh, carbs are probably something that my body doesn't need a lot of all the time. But notice here that the Word of God is better than bread. It's better because it's considered like unto meat, the sincere meat of the Word. Uh, and then also, uh, the same is true of our body's diet. And so I, I just don't want to have the carbohydrates of life, namely worldly junk food, entertainment, music, all of these things that pull us away from God, right? And our relationship with him. And worse, pull us away from our regular dietary intake of his word. So try to find those things that are getting in the way, and push them out of the way, get them out, because they're the carbohydrate junk food of the world that's trying to get you out of the Bible and into them. How, number two. The scripture, oh, I said, uh, well, first of all, let me review the first one. Uh, so we said the scriptures are inspired by God and are profitable. The scriptures illuminate our path. The scriptures provide spiritual nourishment, as we just read. And finally, or this, or I'm sorry, not finally, but next, the scriptures equip us for spiritual warfare. Turn with me over to Ephesians real quick. Ephesians chapter 6. Uh, here we see Paul writing. Uh, about the uh, various uh, pieces of armament. Uh, I like the way he starts off chapter 6, Children, obey your parents. I had to memorize those verses when I was young. <laughs> Colossians 3.20, Children, obey your parents. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so we finally get into the relationship uh, uh, with masters and so on. And then uh, in verse 10, Paul starts talking about the protection of, uh, for believers, how do we protect our spiritual lives, and how do we grow, and and then eventually we get over here to uh, uh, what is it, uh, verse uh, seventeen, where we read uh, Ephesians six seventeen, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So take that helmet of salvation. That helmet goes over your head. That's where all your thinkies. Are. It's also where your stinky thinkies are. And that helmet of salvation, we should be understanding we're saved. We should be understanding and thinking about our salvation and how precious that is to us. And But the latter part of that verse is kind of what I wanted to focus on. And the sword of the Spirit. We need that sword of the Spirit to be able to uh, cut asunder uh, through the fluff to get to the point to give us the defense, and it's more of an offensive weapon than it is a defensive one, but it is both defensive and offensive, and it, uh, it is the Word of God. And the reason why I mention this is because if we don't have any scripture up here in, underneath this helmet of our salvation, the Spirit of God can't recall anything for you to use when you need it. And that is such a troublesome thing I find with this culture today. I'm always, I'm sitting there quoting scripture to these kids, and they just, like, whoa, is that really in the Bible? Yeah, look up such and such, look up such. Well, how do you know all this stuff? I tell them, because you read your Bible every day. I'm telling you, today we have a problem with our young believers our young uh, kids today, they don't read the scriptures. They don't get into the scriptures and make it their own. This is a precious book. It's got so much goodness in it. The very 
heart of God, the word of God, the instructions we need for everyday living, and yet we don't hide it up here in our brain where we can use it. Instantly recall it. Uh, you, you probably would like to have total recall. Uh, I don't think our Arnold Schwarzenegger has much recall. Anyway, our spirits need those tools to fight the spiritual battles in our life. And he can't do it if there's nothing upstairs. You hit this and it goes boom, boom, boom. You know, we need to fill it up so it goes thud. And it's a hard watermelon just full of scriptures right for the using. The spirit can use us so mightily when we have stuff up here. That's why we send pastors off to school to just sit there and immerse themselves and to understand and learn scriptures and how to teach it and so on. Okay, and then the last how uh, is uh, the scriptures lead us to Christ. Most important thing. But you say, uh, Brother Michael, you're, I'm already a believer. And right you are. If you have trusted in that completed work of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection on the cross for your sin, and you're trusting he's going to bring you home to heaven. Yes, that's not the problem I'm talking about, though. The scriptures lead us to a relationship with Christ. A closer relationship. Turn with me over to the gospel according to John. I'm going to use the terminology pastor uses. <laughs> the gospel according to um, John, uh, chapter 5. Real beginning there. So in John chapter 5, uh, we see Jesus uh, in his uh, early uh, ministry here. Um, he does some miracles. There's... Uh, um, there's confrontation with the religious leaders, and uh, there's an argument ensues, a reaction over something done. And then finally, uh, here in the verse uh, 39, verse 39 uh, of, the, of this uh, section here, uh, there's 37, oh, there it is. Uh, and Jesus is rebuking here. He says, uh, um, and have the, well, I'll go back to 38. And ye have not this word abiding in you, from whom he hath sent him, ye believe not. That's uh, talking about himself. Verse 39, search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. So the scriptures here testify of Jesus Christ, of who he is, that he is all God and all man at the same time. The incarnate word of God in the flesh right there before these people. Wow, I wish I was there to see the uh, Jesus Christ in the flesh. Wow, this miracle of miracles, this wonder of wonders. And I'm just thinking, wow, we need to search the scriptures because even us today, the more so, given the fact we can't go down the road and visit Jesus Christ in the flesh. We have some 2,000 years ago uh, have to trust the, what is written in this book to understand it. And God illuminates our, our, our eyes and our faith is restored and re built up on what we have read. God uses the scriptures in a mighty way in our spiritual life. It's the, the words of life, the very words of life. It is life. And as of such, we need to take from that life all the time. Not just when we get saved. Not just on Christmas morning, we read the, the Christmas story. Not just once in a while, all the time, every day. I'm not preaching necessarily to you as much as I'm preaching to myself. I need this more in my life. So I'm finished talking about all the hows. Uh, Christ needs to be at the center. And without him, oh, if you remember John 15, uh, five, uh, Jesus says, I am the vine, you the branches. You remember that scripture? What does it say at the end of that verse? Uh, Some that bring forth fruit. But without me, Jesus says, you can do nothing. We can't do it on our own. We can't do it in our own strength, in our own willpower, our own helmet, our own Salvation? Oh, wait a minute. We can't do salvation on our own either. You know what? We just can't do anything on our own. We're kind of useless. Well, actually, we're kind of useful if we get into the Scripture and put it up there for God to use. Our spirit needs this. Uh, we need to grow. And we need to know Christ 
better. Each one of us, I'm sorry, has not arrived yet. We need Christ every day. And then finally, uh, our reward is in heaven. This is the whole point of this. Matthew 6, 19 says, Lay not up yourself treasures uh, in, upon earth where moth and rust dust corrupt, uh, and where thieves break in and steal. Have you had something stolen recently? Or heard of somebody getting something stolen? Verse 20 of Matthew 6, 20 says, But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor uh, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through or nor steal. You know, our reward is in heaven, and I'm looking forward to that day. That's, that's my eternal retirement planning uh, tip for today. Invest wisely into the scriptures, into the word of God. Invest the time necessary to take in that daily sustenance, because if you prioritize scripture intake, if you set a regular personal time to take it in and you approach scripture study as a way to grow your faith and you approach scripture study as a means to gain that spiritual understanding and if you approach scripture as a way to build your reward in Christ and get closer to him, oh, the Lord rewardeth me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands, he hath recompensed me. That's Psalm 1820. The Lord will, re, uh, will uh, reward us in accordance with our righteousness. How we conduct ourselves on earth, how we spend time with the Lord, how we use the word of God in our life and let it be used through us. Oh, it means all the difference for a happy, eternal retirement in glorifying our Savior, who is worth it all. He laid down his life for us. Oh, he is worth it all. And just a little bit of time, I think, is necessary uh, because we want to build up those treasures in heaven and not necessarily uh, just swagger for a measly little few moments of time here on earth or watching some dumb movie or show that or playing some game when we can be doing something a little bit more constructive for eternity's sake. I wish that blessing on you, that you will find some usefulness out of all this to encourage your hearts to take that time, spend that time in prayer, but mostly in scripture intake so that you too can grow healthy and strong like Titus and uh, Take on the adversaries of this old world. The things are going to, of this earth are, uh, will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace found in this whole book. Take it in and enjoy. Thank you, Father, for the time we've had this evening, for the prayer time, for the time together with uh, us in praying, and also, uh, Father, for the scripture. Bless the Mansfields, when they come home, uh, for, for bless Pastor for his trip, uh, for the funeral tomorrow. And again, we pray for Bobby and for all these prayer requests, Father. Lord, you know, you know each one. But thank you, Father, that we can cast our care on you because you care for us. Help us, Father, to, to be a little bit more disciplined in our Christian walk, that we might be more of a glory to you, Father, through eternity future. In Jesus' name. Oh, the amplifier was not on.